As an experienced engineer or contractor, you've probably already heard about the advantages of fire rated mineral insulated cable. You may have even seen this product out in the field, yet the idea of applying this product and or installing it in your next or current project still makes you feel a little uncertain. But we understand that, because after all, Pyrotenix MI cable can look a little bit intimidating at first sight. This is why at Envent, we've developed this video to not only help you understand MI cable, but also to demystify its installation process and show you just how simple and hassle-free our product is to work with. Now this video is sectioned in three logical parts. That way in the future, you have the flexibility to look at just the portion you need when quoting, performing, or getting ready for your own install. The first section will cover the assessment process, how to study your location which you need to install MI cable. Section two will cover the preparation process, what you must go through ahead of any MI installation. And in section three, we will illustrate a successful MI cable pull taking you through each simple step. So let's get going here. Before assessing or studying your installation site, try and review as many pictures as possible of already installed MI cable, showing a variety of installations. This way you can visually understand what a finished installation looks like and relate it to the type of installation you may be about to walk into. We have many images available on our website, nvent.com, or you can call us to request some. Take note of the type of cables involved in your install, large, medium, and smaller gauges, as well as 90 degree bends, bracings, terminations, enclosure entries, etc. As you begin doing your walkthrough, make note of exactly where all the 90 degree bends will be and where the cable will go from a horizontal to a vertical. As you know, this can already be determined in the line drawings provided by your engineer, or you may have been given some flexibility to design the portions yourself. If that's the case, Make every effort to eliminate as many 90 degree bends as possible. And as you already know from installing other types of cables, pick a route that's basically free of ductwork and pipes. In retrofit situations, this could be harder because you'll be working in a reduced space. But lucky for you, MI cable is the best solution for retrofit installations as it won't take nearly as much space and time to maneuver as other fire rated cable products that need to be run inside of conduit. Keep in mind that you will want to start the MI run wherever there's the least amount of 90 degree bends. This routing is recommended as it is bound to greatly ease the pull. But we acknowledge that you may not have that choice to begin with due to drawing requirements and that's okay. Also, note that you will want to fit the cable reels at the front end of your run. But if that's not possible, then carry on from wherever you can fit the reels. It just means you'll need to take more care when performing the pull. Finally, as you finish your assessment, remember that MI cable installations can become a bit complicated if you try to run the cable from a top-down situation. So try your best to run and pull the cable from the bottom up. This will put more tension on the cable, thereby keeping it as straight as possible during the pull. Pulling from the top down tends to produce cable runs with more waves in them, which require more labor to dress up once the pull has been completed. That's it. Once you've done a good assessment of your site, you can begin setting up for the pull. Let's do a brief recap. Review images of previously installed MI and get familiarized with the product. Take notes of all 90 degree bends, horizontal and vertical. Account for the different gauges you'll be using and of any enclosures, terminations and bracings involved in the install. Identify the clearest path for your run. Follow engineer's drawings or draft your own if applicable. Start your run at the end with least resistance or less 90 degree bends and try to always pull up, not down. Lastly, call Envent and request assistance if you have any questions. One thing we want to tell you about the setup is that it is absolutely 100% the very most important part you need to do well to ensure a hassle-free and successful MI cable installation. We cannot stress this enough. Proper setup is the difference between a very successful and a less successful installation. Start by making sure you have all equipment and the appropriate number of tools you will need for the job, such as jacks, shivs, rollers, and swivels. These will make the installation of MI more efficient and a lot faster. We recommend using solid rods instead of threaded rods when setting up your rollers, shivs, and swivels as they are much stronger and less likely to bend or break. Now, you may be familiar with this following step as it is common practice with many commercial cables. 
but place the MI cable reels on jacks at the bottom end of the run, making sure the pull is over the top of the reel and having good clearance below and on the sides of the reels. This way it can turn with ease as you pull the cable. Remember that each cable reel comes with complete detailed information and installation instructions that need to be carefully read and followed. Next, install your supports along the full length of the run, every six feet both horizontally and vertically. The cable will be secured to these supports once the pull is complete. Remember that supports must be a minimum of one and a half inch steel or copper strut, not aluminum, and be secured to concrete wall or structural steel. Your whole system, including supports, must be two hour fire rated. A quick note, standard sheetrock does not meet the same stringent fire rated standard as MI fire rated cable, so stay away from securing to it. It will lose its integrity and strength in the event of a fire. Next, you need to install your shiv wheels and rollers. Just as with any other type of cable, shivs should be used for all upsets and 90 degree bends, and rollers need to be placed where the cable might rub or create friction. We often say that shiv wheels and rollers should be sized based on cable size, but our experience has shown that 24 inch can be used for nearly everything. If you're dealing with smaller cable pulls of one aught, half inch and smaller, you can size down to 18 inch shiv wheel, but definitely use 24 inch for anything larger. This will just make it easier for the cable to turn around 90 degree bends. Here's a tip. Experienced MI cable installers have learned that friction can also be reduced by using small pieces of PVC piping tied over the struts instead of rollers. And as the cable is pulled in over it in a perpendicular direction, the cable will cross smoothly over as opposed to the bare steel strut. Another important feature of MI cable that many contractors are unaware of is it can actually exceed the so-called 360 degree of bends, something that is forbidden for cable runs inside of conduit. Just one more reason why MI cable is simply better to use when compared to other fire rated wiring products. Once your shiv wheels and rollers are installed, you can proceed to your tugger setup. For simpler installation, standard tuggers are commonly used, but for longer and more complex runs, we recommend the use of a tugger that has a tension gauge and adjustable pulling force control. This will limit the pulling force to safe limits for each particular cable size. Exceeding the limits can damage the cable and or factory installed splices. The next step will be to feed in your pulling rope and attach it to the MI cable end with the use of pulling grips or another suitable fixture. A polypropylene rope is recommended because it will resist stretching. Thread the rope through each shiv wheel and over the rollers in your run, then attach it to the cable head. For longer and more complex runs, we recommend using a basket attached to the cable that has a swivel head. This will keep the cable from twisting as you pull it through all the bends in the run. At this point, you're basically ready. To finish the setup, simply go back and inspect that all shiv wheels and rollers are adequately secured, that your rope is well connected to your MI cable, and your reel is safe on the jacks. This is extremely important as the tension created when you start to pull the cable could make any part of your system give way, especially with larger diameter cables and when you have a large number of bends in the run. With all aspects of your setup complete, you can now continue into the pulling procedure. Let's recap before we move on. Make sure you have all equipment and tools needed for the job. Jacks, sheaves, rollers, rods, tugger, etc. Have good clearance under and around the reels once they are put on jacks and set the pull going over the reel, not under. Install your supports every six feet horizontally and vertically. Use steel or copper strut, not aluminum. Secure to concrete or structural steel. Your full setup must be two hour fire rated. Install sheave wheels anywhere there is a 90 degree bend or turn, 24 inches in diameter for any cable gauge larger than one aught. Set up rollers or use the PVC tubing trick anywhere the cable may rub and create friction. Use a tugger with a tension gauge and adjustable pull force control whenever possible. Use a polypropylene rope to feed and pull through the run. Attach rope to the MI cable with the use of a basket and swivel head. And lastly, remember, proper setup is the key to success. When it comes to pulling MI cable, you need to make sure the proper setup has been completed. Now you can go back to the previous section of this video to see a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. NVENT does not recommend and strongly advises against pulling cable by hand no matter the scenario. Doing so will make the cable pull extremely difficult, if not impossible, 
and the results will be far from ideal as the cable will end up with a lot of waves in it and become very hard and time consuming to dress up and tie securely to the building structure. Start by checking that the rope has been properly fed through the cable run and attached with a swivel head onto the head of the cable. Then put some tension on the rope to the point where it is visually tight. And then also inspect that all shiv wheels and supports remain firmly in place. Remember, the larger the diameter cable and the more bends increases the chances for a tension issue. Every cable pull is different and there isn't a standard for the number of people needed to supervise or perform a cable run, but in a perfect case scenario, you should position personnel at various key points along the run, such as 90 degree bends. All personnel should be equipped with radios or another effective means of communication. Keep one person at the front end of the run, holding onto the reel to provide some back pressure. Another person should be placed at the tip of the cable, following the nose or basket to ensure that everything is going smoothly as the cable goes through all wheels and supports. And lastly, for more complex runs, try to keep two people located with the tugger, one with the radio and one keeping an eye on the tension gauge. If there are multiple stories or floors involved, then position additional personnel at each level to watch over the key supports and bends. Now slowly start pulling in the cable. Have the person supervising the nose follow the cable from behind the attachment and never get in front of it. This is a safety issue. And ensure the swivel head does not get hung up as the cable is pulled over the rollers and bent through the wheels. Sometimes a factory splice may be present on the cable. These are the only situations when manual assistance should be used as splices need to be carefully pulled over the wheels to avoid them from getting hung up. And remember that your pulling tension limits will change when there is a factory splice involved in the pull. It may sound common sense, but in the event that a shiv wheel or support does break or come loose, immediately stop pulling and fix the equipment before proceeding. Ignoring a broken or loose support can compromise your whole installation. Once the cable reaches the finishing end, you can detach the cable from the puller and re-thread the rope through the run to repeat the process if multiple cables are involved in the run. Now we recommend you do not pull multiple cables at the same time until you have had enough experience installing MI and have a full understanding of how pulling multiple cables at once affects your pulling tensions. Remember that since cut MI cables insulation is hydroscopic and will attract water, it's important to seal your cut ends immediately after each run. Use rubber tape, heat shrink tubing, or any other option you're comfortable with to keep moisture from entering the cable. So let's recap. Double and triple check your setup so there are no loose or missing parts. Place personnel at key locations of the pull, feeding and pulling end, and at all levels. Equip all personnel with walkies or establish effective lines of communication. Start slow. Put initial tension on the rope to test that your setup is solid and that the rope is properly attached to the cable. Have one person always follow the head of the cable as you pull and equip them with tools to help them guide the cable through and never get in front of it. The person at the tugger must keep a vigilant eye on the tension gauge as you go through 90 degree bends and or when a factory splice is present. If anything breaks or goes slightly wrong, stop immediately and fix the issue. And lastly, never ever plan or attempt to pull MI by hand. If it seems like the only option, call Enven for advice. After all your cable pulls are complete, you can dress them up and secure them to the supports. Visit the Envent website or contact by phone to ensure you have the right information and design guides detailing dressing, bundling, and strapping requirements. This is important to not only the functionality of the cable, but also meeting the listing. The final step will be cable termination. If you need assistance on how to properly terminate Pyrotenics MI cable, please refer to our written installation instructions or visit our YouTube channel where you'll find a variety of interesting and informative termination videos. Now you've learned the basics on how to install Pyrotenics MI cable. If you have any questions, contact your local NVENT representative or our general inquiries and support line at 1-800-545-6258. While I hope this video has helped to clear up any misconceptions or apprehensions you may have had about installing Pyrotenics mineral insulated cable, and gives you the confidence you need to tackle your next project. All the best and take care.